Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be doing another quick five questions. This one is going to be on stellar evolution. So I already have a video which is to do with that key definitions such as what is the universe, what is a galaxy. Today we're going to be looking more closely at stars. And remember not every single question will be relevant and indeed some examples don't even cover stars. So do make sure you've double checked your specification. Why am I nervous of my own cat? Make sure you've double checked your specification to see if this video is actually relevant to you. Remember, in order to make the most of these videos, you want to listen to the question being asked, pause the video, either say your answer out loud or write down your answer, and then listen to what my version of the perfect answer would be. So first of all, what does the colour of a star tell us? It tells us its temperature. What do the following colours tell us about a star's temperature? So blue, that tells you it's an extremely hot star. Yellow tells you it's a medium hot star. And bizarrely, red tells you that it's, in comparison, a fairly cool star. This is all relative, by the way. Obviously, it's still going to be extremely hot. What is a nebula? Well, it's a collection of dust and gas found in space, which gets pulled together by gravitational force. Now we need to describe the life cycle of a small star. And when we're talking about small star, we're really talking about stars like our sun. So you could use this answer to describe the life cycle of the sun. So in your answer, you want to first of all describe that there's a nebula, which we've just said is a ball of gas and dust which gets pulled together, together by gravitational force. At this point, the star enters its main sequence, which is kind of its main living stage. And this is when it releases huge amounts of energy by hydrogen fusion. And we can say that the forces found within the star are balanced. And this is where our sun is right now. Once that hydrogen runs out, it starts burning helium and it swells up to form a red giant and it expands to form a red giant. When it runs out of fuel altogether, it will shrink to become a white dwarf and lastly, it cools down altogether to become a black dwarf. So those are your main stages in a small star's life cycle. It's a nebula, it enters its main sequence, becomes a red giant, becomes a white dwarf followed by a black dwarf Now, what is the life cycle of a large star? So we're gonna start with our nebula again. So a ball of gas and dust, which gets pulled together by gravitational force. It then enters its main sequence. So the forces are balanced. Hydrogen fusion occurs, which releases huge amounts of energy. Then this is when you get the key main difference between a large star and a small star. It expands to become a red supergiant. And then there's a gigantic explosion called a supernova. And then depending on the size of the star, it either becomes a neutron star if it's slightly smaller, and then if it's really large, it becomes a black hole. And notice, what is a black hole? I don't really know what it is, it freaks me out, but it's something which nothing can escape from, not even light. Make a comparison between the length of the main sequence in a small star and a large star. Notice that a large star has a much longer main sequence, which you could kind of imagine would be true. So what does the brightness of a star depend upon? Well, clearly how far away it is from the Earth, the further away it is, it will look apparently less bright. Secondly, it's the type of nuclear reactions taking place within the star. And thirdly, it depends upon what the star is actually made from. So what are the three ways that astronomers can use to help determine how bright a star is? Firstly, the luminosity of a star which is a measure of the amount of light released per second from the star's surface. Next, see they can measure how bright the star appears from Earth, which we call the apparent brightness. And then next up, we can measure how bright the star appears if all the stars were lined up the exact same distance away from the Earth, and we call that absolute brightness. And that final comparison is much better because it allows us to make valid comparisons as to how bright the star is. So the three things are absolute brightness, apparent brightness, and the general measure of the luminosity of the star. Lyra, I'm getting covered in fur here. And we brushed you yesterday. She gives zero. So what is the Big Bang Theory? Well, it states that the universe is expanding after a single explosion that occurred billions of years ago from a very small point. And at this time, space, time, and matter were created. Lyra, what are the two pieces of evidence we use to support the Big Bang Theory? Well, those are redshift and CMBR, which is cosmic microwave background radiation. So what is redshift? This is quite a complicated concept to explain, but, re but remember stars give off light 
And because we think the universe is expanding, then, then what happens is that wavelength of light gets stretched. And if you were to actually look at a chart, you could see that it actually becomes more red. Hence, it becomes red shifted. So because light from distant planets appears to be red shifted, that would indicate that the galaxies are moving away from us. And actually, the ones which are furthest from us are moving the fastest. So what is CMBR? Well, cosmic microwave background radiation we think was created at the point of the Big Bang. And because we see this background radiation scattered evenly throughout space, we tend to imagine that it all came from one particular point and then that this explosion sent it whizzing out into space, hence its very even distribution. Right, I hope you found this video helpful, guys. Don't forget to like and sub and tell your friends about my channel. Um, and yeah, let me know if you want more quickfire questions and what topics you would like them to be on. Well, that's nice, isn't it? See, we have to do this so that our house doesn't get continually covered in cat hair. How are you not a bald kitten? <laughs>